Today we're going to talk about the third pathway out of the hexosponophosphate pool. One of them, of course, is glycolysis, one of them is glycogen storage, and the third one is the pentose phosphate pathway. This is also known as the hexose monophosphate shunt, and it leads off right here from G6P. The pentose phosphate pathway starts from G6P. Now remember that these two intermediates in the beginning of glycolysis, the traditional glycolysis, uh, are not dedicated to glycolysis yet. They can be used for other things. F G1P is used for uh, glycogen storage, F6P is used for glycolysis, and G6P is used for pentose phosphate. And so we have a new flux control step right here for entering the PPP. But again, this is also known as a shunt. And a shunt, if you remember, is just another way of pushing things through the pathway. A shunt is just another path. Um, so actually what happens here, if you look at the full mechanism or the full balanced equation, is we have three glucose 6-phosphates from the hexose monophosphate pool, plus six NADPs form two fructose 6-phosphates, plus one glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, which is down here in gly glycolysis, um, six NADPHs, and three CO2s. Um, now, of course, we can take some of this stuff off to make nucleic acids. Uh, we can do a whole bunch of other stuff if we want to, um, but the main purpose of this pathway is to make NADPH. NADPH is an anabolic cofactor used to build things, so you use it pretty often in fatty acid and cholesterol biosynthesis, as well as any kind of anabolic process. So that's the main point of this, is to make NADPH. And that's what we're going to get out of the first few reactions here. The first reaction, our flux control step, is G6P dehydrogenase. G6P dehydrogenase is going to remove a hydrogen from G6P, um, and that's going to make one of our NADPHs. The flux control step for entering pentose phosphate is through glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, where we take a G6P, react it with an NADP to make 6-phosphoglucanate lactone and NADPH. So we've made an NADPH um, for anabolic purposes. The active site has G6P bound. It has, of course, an NADP. This looks just like NAD, regular NAD, uh, except for the nucleotides on it have a phosphate. So you can't see that the way I've drawn it here, but it is an NADP. And so you should be able to predict this mechanism having seen a few dehydrogenases before. Um, but let's look at the actual active site of this enzyme so you can kind of see. Here is our active site of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. We have our G6P here in the center. Here's the hydrogen at the anomeric position, and here is the anomeric hydroxyl group. You can see the hemiacetal here, OH and OR, bound at the same carbon. So this is the hydrogen we're going to dehydrogenate. You can also see a histidine, the five-membered ring of histidine, right here in the background. It's going to pull out hydrogen and do the reaction. Other stuff here is just kind of designed to hold the glucose in while you work with it. So it makes it kind of a, a great little enzyme. And there's lots of interesting clinical and genetic ramifications of this enzyme that certain populations have differences that lead to uh, variation within uh, humanity. But this histidine is the one that's important for the reaction mechanism. It's going to pull this hydrogen, and then this one's going to be transferred on NADP. So let's push our arrows here. This histidine in the active site is going to pull the hydrogen off of the anomeric hydroxyl group. We're going to form a double bond. And now, normally, we would bust the ring open at this point. We've seen this before in ring opening mechanisms. We would just pop this ring and protonate, and we'd be done. Now, this is a dehydrogenase enzyme, and NADP is nearby. And so in case, in, in actuality, the best energetic outcome for this is to transfer our hydrogen onto NAD. Most other enzymes don't have an NAD bound in their active site. In this, in this case, we do have an NADP, and that makes hydrogen the best leaving group and not the tail. So that hydrogen is going to go on to the top of NADP, and we're going to push arrows through the ring here. So what we're going to have here is a double bond O in the ring. This hydrogen is now an NADP to make NADPH. And what you can see here is that we have a protonated histidine, we have an NADPH, and we have a what's called lactone sugar now. It's an internal ester within the ring. Uh, now, 
we've gotten our NAD pH, which is one of our key outcomes, but we're now starting to set up some interesting chemistries uh, that we can start to use for our uh, reactions here. We've got to pop this ring open in the next step so that we can do some interesting stuff um, with, the, with the control of this pathway and generate some CO2. Now the last thing we need to do is just to regenerate our enzyme. Our phosphate's going to pull the hydrogen off of the histidine and give a pair back to nitrogen. So we finish. Our two substrates are 6-phosphogluconol, delta-lactone. Uh, the delta is just from the positions, you know, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, there's the lactone. Alpha is the one next to the carbonyl, beta, gamma, delta, and the oxygen is attached to the delta, so that's a delta-lactone. Our NADPH is released. This is released, and we're ready to go again for a second round. Now, this forms the flux control step for the pentose phosphate pathway. This is the control point. Uh, G6P is actually the only known promoter of this, so if the, if the pentose phosphate uh, is turned on, it's most likely by glucose 6-phosphate. So this forms the first reaction what's called the oxidative phase of PPP. And that's where we're generating our NADPHs. Every G6P that goes in here is going to get two NADPHs made from it. So this is a hugely important payoff phase for PPP. The rest of the PPP, the confusing parts of it with all the shuffling, is all just a way of getting stuff back into glycolysis and into the HMP. So this is the important part of PPP. We'll see in two more mechanisms um, the other important piece, which is the uh, decarboxylation oxidation step. Thanks.